Hello everyone. In the last class, we have seen the differential migration, which happens in the chromatography techniques. In the differential migration, the components of a mixture they move with different speeds along with the mobile phase. Okay, so due to that different rates of movements, the separation is possible. we have observed that in the differential migration concept and now today we are going to learn about the adsorption how the adsorption is going to happen on the stationary phase and uh, the generally used adsorb uh, uh, the compounds which we used for this stationary phase also we are going to see some examples and Uh, also we are going to study about different adsorption forces okay what are the energies which are uh, responsible for the adsorption in the chr chromatographies and also uh, we are going to discuss about the solvent systems or the mobile phases or eluents okay so now let us uh, start with the adsorption phenomenon in the chromatography a compound or the mixture is adsorbed on the solid support or a stationary phase it is generally a solid support so it is uh, the adsorbent is a solid support and it acts as a stationary phase and uh, due to the differential migration the compounds on the stationary phase are eluent eluted by the mobile phase and different compounds adsorbed on adsorbent with different speeds or different energies and they move with the mobile phase with different speeds so the adsorption of uh, a compound is different from the other compound one compound adsorbs with a different energy when compared to the other compound so the uh, adsorbent used in the chromatography will have the following characteristics one is surface area okay we already know uh, when we studied the surface chemistry there we can uh, we come to know about the adsorption phenomena uh, any compound which is porous or finely divided can be used as a good adsorbent because the finely powdered form of a particular compound provides good surface area for the adsorption so always the finely powdered form or finely divided form of the adsorbent particles they provide better surface area which can adsorb the compounds more effectively when compared to bigger sized grained compounds so only finely divided state of adsorbent particles can provide good surface area for the effective adsorption of the compounds so we can say the adsorbents with large surface area they are good for adsorption and the finely powdered state of the adsorbent can provide good surface area and acts as a good adsorbent and on that surface only adsorption can take place effectively and the second characteristic of adsorbent is nature of the adsorbent means what is the chemical structure and uh, chemical groups of the adsorbents they also decide the uh, adsorption okay so the strength of adsorption it depends upon the chemical structure and also the chemical groups of the adsorbents means here we can say the polarity of the adsorbents it decides the adsorption okay so nature of the adsorbent generally we use uh, silica gel and alumina as the adsorbents silica gel most commonly used silica gel it is chemically sio2 dot x is a number x h2o okay sio2 x 
H2O. It is called as silica or silicic acid or silica gel. And here, the surface of the silica gel, surface of the silica gel will be covered by the OH groups. It is polar uh, adsorbent and the surface is covered by the OH groups and due to this it can adsorb uh, the compounds effectively due to the presence of the surface hydroxyl groups it is a good adsorbent and the silica gel is highly polar solid stationary phase it is solid okay it is a solid material and it will be in the uh, finely divided state white colored and uh, finely divided state it uh, behaves as a weak acid due to its ph which is equal to 3.5 ph of the silica gel is equal to 3.5 or it is in between 3 to 5 ranges from 3 to 5 ph so it acts as a weak acid also and another is uh, alumina Al2O3. Alumina is also an acidic uh, adsorbent. Alumina chemically Al2O3. Okay. In hydrated form it will be like this. Al2O3 dot XH2O in the hydrated form. Okay. So, here uh, this Al2O3 surface is also covered by the OH groups and uh, here generally the alumin, alumina hydrate here alumina adsorbs the water and this alumina is the activated alumina and activated alumina is only used in the uh, chromatography mainly in the column chromatography it is used and the surface of the alumina Al2O3 will have the adsorbed OH groups. It is acidic in nature with pH range from 4 to 5. pH is equal to 5 or 4 to 5 it ranges from 4 to 5 and hence it is also known as acidic alumina. Like the silica gel here also the surface is covered by the OH groups. So it is also a polar solid stationary phase. It is also a polar solid stationary phase similar to the silica gel. And uh, the adsorption forces, what are the adsorption forces? Let us look into them. The adsorption forces here are 1. Van der Waal forces number 2 inductive forces and number 3 hydrogen bonding energies hydrogen bonding forces or energies okay these are the three types of adsorption forces which helps in the binding of the compound to the this adsorbent Van der Waal forces are the weak forces which are the weak attraction forces between the non-polar compounds and the solid support. Okay. These are the weak adsorption forces. And inductive forces. Inductive forces are observed in the compounds which have C double bond O and C double bond OCl etc type of groups where a permanent dipole is uh, induced due to the uh, electronegativity differences between the carbon and the heteroatom between the carbon and the heteroatom there exists some uh, differences in the electronegativities and due to these things there uh, there will exist a permanent dipole here between that uh, carbon and the heteroatom. A permanent dipole will be created and uh, these uh, uh, compounds they adsorb on the solid support or these adsorbents. Okay. So, these uh, forces which bind such type of uh, compounds to the uh, adsorbent are the inductive forces. And another is hydrogen bonding forces. The compounds which are, which are able to form hydrogen bonding with the adsorbent they can uh, they can bind to the adsorbent more effectively 
means hydrogen bonding in the compounds uh, which type of compounds the hydrogen bonding will take place see here in the compounds which has the hydrogen attached to highly electronegative atom means like this oh okay nh2 etc in such type of uh, groups the hydrogens are attached to high electronegative atoms like oxygen and nitrogen these are able to form hydrogen bonding with the adsorbents so they form hydrogen bondings with the adsorbents and uh, here when we compare the van der waal forces and inductive forces with the hydrogen bonding forces the hydrogen bonding forces are more effective they help in the effective adsorption of the compound to the adsorbent they bind with more energy to the adsorbent and uh, they they will be uh, adsorbed to the solid support or solid stationary phase okay so these are the three types of forces which are responsible for the adsorption and solvents mobile phases and uh, eluents here uh, we already discussed that the compounds in the mixture will have different adsorption energies or uh, adsorption strengths towards the stationary phase their separation can be done when mobile solvent moves through the stationary phase here mobile phase is called eluent the mobile phase is called as the eluent solvent or the mobile phase is called as the eluent and here another important thing is eleutotropic series the solvents are arranged in a order of their decreasing polarity uh, increasing polarity in the order of their increasing polarity and this order is eleutotropic series the arrangement of solvents in the increasing order of polarity is known as the eleutotropic series generally when we do the uh, chromatography techniques what we will do the uh, low polarity solvent is first taken as the eluent what will happen when we use the low polarity solvent the less polar compounds they come along with that solvent outside and after that we go on increase the polarity of the solvents we use means we take the more polar solvents later first we take the less polar solvents and later the uh, we increase the polarity means we take the solvents with high polarities and uh, thereby we separate the different compounds when a less polar solvent is used as eluent the less polar compound in the mixture will be eluted first and when a more polar compound are there in the mixture they are more strongly adsorbed and for such compounds less polar uh, solvent cannot be used as a eluent there more polar solvents are needed to elute the compound so you can see here the eleutotropic series here starting from the petroleum ether to acetic acid uh, pet ether has less polarity whereas the acetic acid has the high polarity all these solvents that is petroleum ether cyclohexane carbon tetrachloride benzene chloroform diethyl ether ethyl acetate acetone ethanol methanol water is also used and and the acetic acid are the general eluents or the solvents used in the chromatographic techniques in the next uh, class we are going to discuss the remaining concepts thank you